We're going to uh, preach this morning about when life knocks you down. When life knocks you down. I think I have this story correct. I'm not a, I'm not a football player and not too much in watching football, but I heard this story which was quite interesting. Walter Payton, and again, I think I had this right, he was, the, he was a, a running back in the NFL, and uh, on an average, he got knocked down every 4.6 yards, he got knocked down. He got knocked down 3,422 times. That's the amount of times he got knocked down. Yet each time he saw a reason to get back up and go again. Yes. 3,422 times he got knocked down. He didn't make a touchdown every time. We have to have a reason to get back up. Y'all heard me? We have to have a reason. Our reason for getting back up has to be greater than our reason for getting knocked down. Right. Or the reason we got knocked down at Yes. Our reason to get back up has to be greater than the reason we got knocked down. It may have been our own fault that we, knocked, we got knocked down. It may be somebody else's fault that we got knocked down. But we have to have a reason and we have to have a purpose. And that's what we're going to talk about about this morning when life knocks you down. I, I heard a story and this, is, this took place years and years ago. And there were these women that were going to be missionaries to, to some Indians. And again, this is Years ago, before they had cars and before they had the modern conveniences of life, airplanes and cars and vehicles, they had to be transported, you know, by wagons and by horses and so forth and so on. So they traveled a long, long distance and they were going to be missionaries to these Indians. Now these Indians that they were going to be missionaries to had, had you know, they had a reputation of killing missionaries that had been there before. In fact, these women that went there, their husbands had gone there before, and their husbands were killed by the Indians. So they decided, we're going to go, and we're going to take up the work that they started, and we're going to present them the gospel of salvation. <laughs> now, someone asked them on their journey, you know, while they were on their journey, they asked them, is it really worth it going on this journey that you're going and, 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 and encountering all the hardships that you're going to encounter along the way? And, and, and there's quite a number of reasons that you have that you could turn around and go back. So many, so many reasons that you could turn around and go back. But the reason to go on was greater than the reason to turn back. Yes. They said, that's why we made a covenant with our Lord. When we started this journey, we made a covenant with our Lord that we would not turn back. Yes. And we're going to stick to that. That's right. Yeah. And you know that's what we've got to do, church. Yeah. That's what we've got to do. Because there's going to be times we're going to not be knocked down. Yeah. There's going to be times we're going to want to quit. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be times we're going to want to turn around and go back. Mm -hmm. But the reason to go ahead yes. is going to have to be greater yes. than the reason to turn back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There was a time that the disciple, Jesus asked his disciples when everyone was leaving Jesus. 
Everyone was walking away. And he looked at his disciples and he said, Will you leave me also? And they made the statement to him, Where are we going to go, Lord? You're the only one that has words of eternal life. So you see, what we've got to have, church, is a reason that extends beyond the now. It extends beyond a life of good feelings. But we have to have an eternal purpose. We have to have something that goes beyond just now. Because I'm telling you, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. You're going to face troubles every day of your life. Let's look at a scripture. <coughs> you know, and I want to say this. One of them made a statement. They, they, they had asked him about, aren't you afraid of dying? Aren't you afraid of dying? Because these Indians, I mean, they could very well kill you at any moment. Aren't you afraid of dying? And here's what they said. I am not afraid of death. The only thing that I am afraid of is living a life without a purpose. You see, they had a purpose. They were going to present the gospel to people that had never heard the gospel. So you see, they were not afraid of death. The only thing that they were afraid of was living a life without a purpose. And that's what we're going to be talking this morning. Where is your life going? Do you have some kind of purpose in life? No, and I'm not, I'm going to use you, son, if you don't mind this morning. This young man says he wants to be a preacher. Hallelujah. He comes and hears the word and he asked the question, he posed the question, you think I could be a preacher like Brother Ralph someday? You know? 14 year old boy. And when I preached that message and I talked about how I preached my first message at 14 years old, he asked his grandma, he said, you think I could do that? All of a sudden, all of a sudden he got a, he got a, a purpose in mind. Right. All of a sudden he got a goal in mind. Right. Look, it's not to get a good job and make a bunch of money and spend a bunch of money and buy this and buy that, buy this car and buy this house and all those things. All those things can be added if it's in God's will. But you've got to have something beyond buying a house. You've got to have a purpose beyond buying a house, buying a car. And you know, your purpose for serving God today, church, has to be greater. Your purpose for serving God has to be greater than a lot of these preachers are preaching constantly. You turn the television on and their, their message is prosperity. Prosperity. God wants to bless you. Prosperity. And that's all they ever preach. You have to have something that extends beyond this life. Because you don't have to have two pennies to rub together. But let me tell you, you've got a purpose and your purpose extends beyond this life to eternal. You know what you're going to be doing? You're going to be reaching for souls. Yeah. You're going to be reaching for souls. Right. When you have an eternal purpose in mind, you're going to be reaching for souls. Let's look at Ephesians, the third chapter. <clears throat> and the eleventh verse. According. Everybody say according to. According to. According to. According to. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. According to the eternal purpose. There's an eternal purpose. And you know the only way you're going to get to that eternal purpose is through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right. You see? So, so. Every one of us today, and, I, and I'm going to try to open your eyes to understand that you can spend your whole life trying to make money, building better homes and driving better cars and, and all these things. But ever since I was a child and I felt that calling of God upon my life, there was one thing I had in mind. I did build houses along the way. I did buy cars along the way. I did do those things along the way.
the way. But you see, that was really not my life. Those were just things that were added. I had an eternal purpose in mind. <clears throat> and again, when you get that eternal purpose, you're going to focus your attention upon souls. Souls is going to be there in the forefront. Why? Because houses is gonna houses is gonna go back to to, to ashes one day. Or, or all the things that the cars that you buy are gonna rust one day. All these things that you work so hard, spend endless countless hours you spend to working to get those things, all those things are gonna go back to nothing. They're going to rust and they're going to corrupt. Yeah. But you see, there is such a thing as a soul that's, right. that's yeah. going to live throughout eternity. Yeah. Everyone we encounter in life, I want you to look around you today. Look at the one that's sitting next to you. That individual that is sitting next to you is a soul. That individual that is sitting next to you will either spend eternity in heaven, right. eternal, right. or they will spend eternity in hell. Right. You know, sometimes I wonder, do people really believe this? Do we really believe that one day our children that we're raising do we really believe that one day those children will stand before the great white throne of judgment and one day they're going to give account of themselves to God? One day those children are going to grow up to be adults. And I wonder, what are we doing? What are we doing about that eternal purpose that God has for them? You see, well, we buy them this and we buy them that. We do this for them and we do that for them. But what is, is any of that, does any of that involve eternal eternity? Does any of that have anything to do with their eternal purpose? You see, what we should be doing with our children is training them up in the way that they should go. If they have talents, if they have singing talents, we ought to be doing everything we can to develop their singing talents. If they have musical gifts, we need to do everything that we can to encourage them to develop those musical gifts. Why? Because if we, you know what David said? David used to play the harp, or the Word of God says about David, he used to play the harp and drive the evil spirits away from Saul. You see? Drive evil spirits away. And if they can learn to sing under the anointing of God, you hear these little children, young, young kids, get up here. And they've already started learning to sing under the anointing of God. And as that anointing begins to flow, that anointing begins to minister to people. You see, that is an eternal purpose. But no, what parents today, they're concerned about buying them this and buying them that. They're not interested in developing something in their life that can be beneficial in the kingdom of God. Gifts. I do believe that every individual, I believe that every one of us are born with gifts. Your gift may differ from my gift, but I believe that every individual uh, every one of us is born with gifts. And we need to develop those gifts. You see, Brother Ralph didn't always preach when I preached my first message. <clears throat> when I was 14 years old, I still remember the message I preached about, is there not a cause? When little, when little David came, when, when he came against Goliath, and he looked at all the rest of them that were fearing and trembling, and they were afraid of Goliath. But you see, if the Philistines would have took them captive, they would have been in bondage to the Philistines, and they would have become the slaves. God's people would have become slaves to Philistine. And David stood up and said, is there not a cause? Yes. Yeah. What he was saying, is there not a reason? Right. 
That's what he's saying, Brother John. Right. Is there not a reason? I preached that message when I was 14 years old. Is there not a cause? Is there not a reason? I saw a reason way back then. And you know that very reason has brought me through some very difficult times in my life. It's brought me through when I was in my lowest valley. And it's brought me through when I was on the highest peak of the mountain. When everything was going good. For that reason. I had that for a reason. Right. And all the rest of the young boys. You know how young boys are. They were doing their thing. They were doing their thing. I mean, opportunity will come knocking on your door. Have come knocking. I mean, opportunity will present itself to you. Sometime when opportunity, you got to watch where the opportunity comes from because sometimes the devil brings the opportunity. Right. I had opportunity. I remember one time I was living behind Brother Spell's church in a, in a trailer. You see, the devil never stops trying to bring you down. And opportunity, opportunity came knocking on my door. Two young, beautiful girls came knocking on my door. I don't need to go any further than that. And I could have messed up my life right then and there. I could have messed up my life. But you know what? I have a reason far greater to turn away from that temptation. I had a reason. I had a reason, church. You have got to have a reason. Is there not a cause? Is there not a reason? Yes. Right. Yes. You know, the reason got to be inside of you, Lord. It just can't be a thought in your mind. It's got to be something inside. It's got to be embedded within your heart. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Because again, opportunities are going to Young know, man, opportunities will present themselves. Right. You're living in even a different age than I lived in. But believe, believe me, as a, even as a young boy, opportunity presented, presented itself. But you know what? I had to have a reason. And my reason was that I saw things through an eternal purpose. I saw souls what if I would have given in? But I saw souls. We got to keep in view the souls. So you know what we need to do? We need to raise our children. We need to, it, it's not a time just to keep our bit, children busy on computers. and It's not a time just to keep our children busy. When is the last time as a family you sat down and read the precious Word of God to your children? Amen. When is the last time you had a prayer meeting in your home with your children? For the most part, people don't even bring their kids to church anymore. Don't you understand? Don't you understand that that is a soul don't you understand that that child is not going to always, oh yeah, if the Lord came right now, we know that that child would go to heaven because he's not at the age of accountability. But there will come a time that child will reach the age of accountability. And what are you doing for that eternal purpose that is in that child's life? You see, that child is going to grow up. And that child is going to develop into a young lady. Or that child is going to develop into a young man. And what are you doing to try to mold and make that child into a vessel that would be pleasing unto God today? Oh, children know everything about everything in the world. They know everything about every Disney character. They know everything that there is. Uh, I mean, they can work the computer. I gotta ask them for help. They know to do. They know how to work those iPods and iPads and what all those things are. They know how to operate them better than I do. But do they know how to turn the pages of an old book called the Bible? And do they know how to read? 
from the pages of the Bible. Do they know that? Have they been taught that? You see, I used to sit and watch my dad. Again, my dad had a second grade education, which would amount to a first grade education because they didn't have kindergarten back then. First grade education. And I used to sit him, watch him sit at the table. I still visualize this. He had an eternal purpose. He struggled to read. He struggled to read. But I'd watch him sit there for a long period of time and just maybe it would take him a long time just to read a very few, few scriptures. But he showed me he showed me that that book is important. He showed me how precious the Bible is and how valuable that book is. Amen. You know, I preach this Tuesday night in Psalms 119. He said, the words of thy law, it's more precious than thousands of silvers or gold. The words of thy law is more precious than thousands. Psalms 119, somewhere in the 60th and 70th verse, somewhere around there. The words of thy mouth is more precious than thousands of silver or gold. But you know what I said? People don't realize what that's even saying. And, what, and, and the value that is put upon that. I often quote you that scripture, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold. Yeah. One word. Everybody say one word. one word. Fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. How valuable is that? Could you equate the value of that today? How much would that be? Apples of gold, pure gold. Not apple, but apples of gold, not in a picture, but in pictures. One hey, hey, again, say one word. One word. How many words in the Bible? How many fitly? Are they fitly spoken? Oh, they're fitly spoken. How many words in the Bible? But how many times will your children go all week long and never crack the Bible? How many times will you go all week long? And you'll never sit down and read a passage of those precious, valuable words to your children. You say, no, but they'll spend endless hours doing this, and they'll spend endless hours doing that, and they'll spend endless hours doing things that don't, don't, don't amount to a thing. All that stuff that they're putting in their heads all that information that they're putting in their head. And you see how, you notice how obsessed they are with it? They are obsessed with those things. They will spend countless hours glued to that thing. And let me tell you, all that information will not amount to anything. Even if it's, if it's harmless information, it will not amount to anything. It's of no value. It's of no value whatsoever. It's just time killing. That's all it is. It's just time killing. Get out of my hair. Get away from me. Don't bother me because I got things I got to do. You know, I got to get on mine too because I want to do some things too. Don't bother me. What are you saying to that child? That child needs some piece of training. Train them up in the way that they should go. You see, what we got to realize are those precious, those precious souls. You got to look at a child. It's not just for your entertainment. Oh, look at my beautiful little baby. Look how beautiful they are. No. Oh man, I enjoy being. I enjoy my child. This, you know, God gave me this child. I enjoy this child. You know what God gave you? God gave you a soul. God gave beyond the exterior being. Whether they're pretty, whether they're ugly, whether they're short, whether they're tall, it doesn't matter. God gifted you with a soul for your safekeeping. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with that soul? 
You know the sad thing about this is I'm going to preach this this morning. And some of you are going to go on and continue in the same way that you've always continued. But I'm hoping that someone catches a grip this morning. And I'm hoping that some soul is saved. I'm hoping that some child, that some child that the devil has a plan for. You see, God has a purpose and a plan. How many know someone else has a purpose and a plan? You know what the devil said about the children of Israel? He said, I will pursue, I will overtake, and I will destroy. You see, that's what he wants to do. He wants to pursue, he wants to overtake, and he wants to destroy. God has gifted you with something so precious. Maybe you have more than one. What are you doing about that? Are you teaching them the ways of God? See, or are you teaching them that the Word is not really important? Now you can say it with the mouth, oh, the Bible is important, but you know your actions speak louder than words. You can say, say, say all kinds of stuff. You can say, say, say and talk, 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 but how important is it to you? Do your children ever see you opening that book that is so precious? That it's more valuable than thousands of gold and thousands of silver? Do they ever see you open that book? Do you ever see, do they ever see you read from the pages of that book? I still visualize. I still see. And the book called the Bible was the most important book in my dad's life and in my mom's life. They loved it. And you know what? They esteemed the words of God more than their necessary food. They esteemed Him so highly, the words of His mouth. So this morning, I want, to see, I want you to see and understand this morning what God has placed within our care. You might say, well, my kids are grown. You know, I don't have any, you know, they're, they're all grown. But I want you to know everywhere you go, every person you come in contact with is another soul. And what does the Bible say to do for you to do? Let your light so shine before men that, that they may see. That they may see. Oh, there's a lot of hearing. There's a lot of talk. There's a lot of talk. Let your light so shine before men. You don't need to go around advertising I'm a Christian. You don't need to have a t-shirt that says I'm a Christian. Your light. And I'm going to tell you, there's something inside of us called the light. Yes. That you don't have to say I'm a Christian. That light doesn't have to tell me that it's a light. How do I know that it's a light? Because it shines like a light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father. In other words, so they may come to God. That's how, that is our whole purpose in life. That is that eternal purpose in life. You see, Stephen put that up there. The law of thy mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver. An eternal purpose. And when you get that eternal purpose, you will be like these, you see, you'll be like these women that were going into this, this mission field that that knew that they could lose their life any minute. They could lose their life any minute. I want us to go to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, and read this. For I am now ready to be offered. This is Paul speaking. What is he saying? I'm now ready to die. I'm ready to be offered. I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. You know, I'm fixing to leave this old world. For the, it, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. 
and I have kept the faith. Yes. You see, these are all things you got to do. These are things you got to do. Right. I have what? Fought I have fought. fought. Right. I have finished. Right. You see, I started on this course years and years ago. And there was all kinds of things, all kinds of contrary winds that tried to blow me off course. They tried to blow, but my sails were set. My sails were set, and I refused. I refused to be blown off course. And I have kept the faith. Therefore, do we have another? Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And everybody's saying, not to me only. And not to me only. And not to me only. But unto all them also that love is appearing. Hallelujah. I want my kids, I want my grandkids, I want everyone to come in, that I come in contact to know that Jesus is coming again. Amen. Anyone that loves is appearing. You know, this world is not my home. I don't know if you feel the way that I feel. But if it wasn't for those that I love and, 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 and hoping that I can make some kind of impact upon their life, I would say today, Jesus, come and get me. I am I am ready to be offered. You know what? Why did Paul, why was Paul able to say, I am ready to be offered? Why? Because he had lived his life for Christ. He had lived his life for God. So if you live your life for God, then death is not going to have any fear. Right. You're not going to be afraid of death. Not if you live your life. So he said, I am ready to be offered. I offer myself unto you. The time of my departure. I'm fixing to leave this whole world. You know, Paul, Paul said, I fought a good fight. What kept him fighting? Because he had a reason. What kept, him, what, what kept him on course? Right. He had a reason. That was his reason. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I got a reason. There is a place that's called heaven. Not only is there a place called heaven, there's a heaven to gain. And there's a hell to shun. Right. Right. Heaven to gain. And hell to shun. And when we look at it through eternity, what we need to do is look at life, start looking at life in the realm of eternity. Not just the now. Not just the now. If you look at life on the realm of eternity and you look at that precious child on the realm of eternity, then are you going to still behave the same way you do behave with them? Are you going to say, conduct yourself around them in the same manner in which you conduct yourself? Are you going to still raise them the way you're raising them? But if you look at them as a soul, if you look at them as they have an eternal purpose, then what you're going to try to do is raise them up. You see, my dad and them, they brought me to church to hear the Word of God because they knew that the Word of God was going to keep me through some very difficult times. And they knew the value of the Word of God, that it was much more precious than, than thousands of silver and gold. They knew that. They didn't have much money to give me. In fact, when I started on my own life, they actually didn't have anything to give me. Brother Dunning didn't have anything to give Sister Jackie when we started on our life. As far as temporal thing, you know, I want to give my kids what I never had. Right? That's what they say. I want to give my kids. What are they talking about? Temporal things. Right. But you know what? what they did I want to give my kids, and I want to give my grand not temporal things, mm -hmm. but I want them, I want to look at them on the realm through the eyes of eternity, through an eternal purpose. So therefore, I want my children to get as much of the Word of God as they possibly can. You might say, well, Brother Ralph, you can overdo it. Let's not even talk about overdoing it. Because if you, if you can tell me <coughs> that children are not overdoing it, and some of the things that they do, and some of the things that they're participating in, if they're not engrossed in it, Huh. 
I mean, they're so, they will spend, again, they will spend endless hours in it. Something that doesn't amount to a hill of beans. So don't tell me that you can overdo it for God. When you realize how valuable and how precious the Word of God is, you really can't get enough of it. So this morning, I want us all, is there room for improvement in any of our lives? Can we improve? Can I improve? Yeah. When you get to the place where you can no longer grow and you can no longer improve, you done got out of God's hands. Right. You see? As long as you're in the Master's hands, believe me, as long as you're in the Master's hands, there's always room for improvement. I don't care if you've been preaching all your life. I don't care if you've been preaching for, for 50, 49 years like I have. There's always room for improvement. <clears throat> You know what the Word of God makes me want to do this morning? It makes me want to climb up a little higher in God. So this morning, I want us all, I want us all to think about that eternal purpose. What is it that God has for me? What is that purpose? What is that plan that God has for me? And I can guarantee you today, when you start getting a soul, when you start getting souls in focus, and you start looking at individuals as souls, you're going to live your life quite differently. <clears throat> you're going to let your light shine before them because you want them to go to heaven too. And you want them to live in heaven instead of going to hell. Amen. You see? Those little children that you're raising, look into those precious eyes. Look into those precious eyes and what you're going to see is a soul. Look beyond the physical being and you're going to see a being that is going to live throughout eternity. What are you doing to promote them in the kingdom of God? What are you doing to get, encourage them to use all their gifts and all their talents? You know, in, in school, my kids knew they better make as good a grade as they possibly can. I wanted them to reach every bit of potential that they could possibly reach. If they could make A's, I wanted them to make straight A's if they could make A's. If they had that potential, I wanted them to use all the natural abilities that they had. But you see, much more than that, much, much more than that, I wanted them to be used of God. I wanted them to, to help lead souls from out of darkness and, and out of the realms of eternity and hell into a place that's called heaven. I wanted them. And I, I did my best to do that with them. I've spoken to you today and I want us all at this moment. I want us to start thinking on the realm of eternity, my life. You can't do any, you can't live anyone else's life, but you can live your what am I doing? What am I doing? Don't point your finger at your brother and your sister and say, boy, they sure they need to be doing this with their kids and they need to be doing this with their life. No, you do it as an individual. I want us to all examine ourselves as the Bible teaches us to do. Examine ourselves. Would you do that this morning? Examine yourself before God. God, is there some kind of improvement that I can make? And I'd be the first to say, yes, Lord. There's still some improved areas of improvement in my life. I could climb up a little bit higher. I could excel a little bit higher for God. There's things in my life that need improvement. Can you say that this morning? Again, I'm not asking you to look at someone else and say, well, they need to do this. You can't do a thing about what they need to do, but you can sure do something about yourself. Here's what I want to do this morning. I want to open up these altars to you this morning. If you feel like there's room for improvement in your own life, I want you to acknowledge it by coming up toward this front and say, Jesus, I want you to use me. I want you to use me, Jesus. Sister Michelle would come, we'll sing that.